Hi everybody, it's Katie back with another episode of my vlog and as promised for about a week now, I am finally here to give you my hand sewing tutorial. Um, several people have requested a hand sewing tutorial so I thought I would go ahead and do one. Um, with all these tutorials it's kind of a funny thing because I never really know where to begin with something and what level of knowledge to assume and so I was thinking about how to approach doing this vlog and I thought well you know where do I begin and the line from Alice in Wonderland uh, popped into my head the the uh, king of hearts says to Alice when she goes to give her testimony in court well begin at the beginning and continue on until you get to the end and then stop so I'm going to begin at the beginning which for me um, was I learned how to do embroidery before I learned how to do uh, hand sewing for construction. Um, when I was about nine or ten years old, my dad moved to a new house in El Cerrito um, and there was a little embroidery hobbyist store uh, called Skane Lane and he took me there a couple times to see if there was something that would interest me and right away I became very into doing um, counted cross stitch. That's the form of embroidery where you use a grid-like fabric and everything is a little X. Um, it looks a lot like pixel art. It's really fun, it's really satisfying. There's only two stitches you need to know to do cross stitch and you can make tons of different pictures. Um, so I spent a good while going through the various kits and things that they had at that store and making little cross stitch projects. Um, but pretty quickly I wanted to expand out of just the wor world of this sort of restrictive grid of the cross stitch thing. Um, and I just wanted to learn more basic embroidery stitches. And so um, I spent several afternoons at the store as a kid um, learning from the older women who ran the store what their techniques for embroidery were and what their, um, I don't want to say rules, but you know, uh, guidelines. And they gave me three basic guidelines for hand embroidery, which I have stuck with to this day. Um, guideline number one is there is no rush here. Um, if you're hand sewing or doing embroidery, that is a slow process. So it's slow and that's what you're doing. Um, if you're in a rush, you uh, probably want to be using a sewing machine instead of hand sewing because that's how you make this job go faster. Um, but it's definitely not, um, if you're doing hand sewing, it is not a rush type of thing. It's a slow thing. It's a meditative thing. Um, Take your time, give your project the time that it needs. There is no rush here. Uh, the second guideline they gave me is no knots. Never tie a knot on the back of your work or anywhere else. Um, and I have kept to that philosophy with embroidery. And I know how to secure the end of my thread with embroidery and so I don't tie knots there, but I do break the rule um, when I'm using hand sewing techniques for other things like quilting um, or other construction things where I want it to be really strong. Obviously you need to tie a knot if you want your thread finish to be super strong. Um, and so I use very small square knots and then I bury the ends of my thread inside of the project so you can't see them. The knot does make a tiny little lump though and so if you're being like some kind of ultra perfectionist about your embroidery or hand sewing um, you might want to go with the no knots thing. I try to only use knots when I need to um, in order to make it strong. Other than that I do try to stick with the no knots philosophy. Um, and the third guideline that they gave me was try to make the back of your work almost as good looking as the front of your work. Don't carry the thread across a big open space. Don't go back and forth on things a bunch of times. You don't want this big sloppy tangly mess on the back of your work. And so I took that very much to heart and um, if you look at my embroidery, let me give you an example of some embroidery. Here's a little um, spray can that I embroidered based on a design that Sean drew and if you look at the back it is almost as neat as the front. Um, you know, you can basically see the exact same design, but it's a fuzzier line. But you can see I don't carry my um, threads across any of the open space on the embroidery. So again, there's the front of that guy. Um, so this particular piece of embroidery was done completely using backstitch. And backstitch is my favorite all-purpose hand sewing stitch. So that is the one I'm gonna teach you guys how to do today. Um, but of course I do want to have a little talk about tools and materials and all that stuff before we get into how to make the humble backstitch. So when I uh, said that cross stitching only uses two stitches, 
Um, that is cross stitch, which is the one that is an X, and then back stitch, which is the one you use to make straight lines. Um, I love back stitch. It is my absolute favorite out of every stitch that I know. I use it more often than anything else. Um, I will, of course, show you guys other stitches as well, but this is my number one go-to uh, one. I wanted to show you the back of my um, pork army vest has this um, radiating design coming out from the center. That's all hand done backstitch lines in pink and white thread. I'll get a little closer so you can see it. So all of that was done by hand. I sewed the patches on using my sewing machine, but all of the embroidery on that uh, halo around the central design there was done by hand using backstitch. So there you go. That's what you can do with some backstitch. Um, I also have this example. I showed a photo of this on uh, my Instagram a few weeks ago. I made this many, many years ago. I was having some trouble coming up with face ideas for characters and Sean came up with the idea of making a face library. So we sketched up a bunch of different faces and then I embroidered them. And again, that's almost all backstitch that you're looking at there. All those straight lines are all backstitch. And just to give you a, another look, there's the back of it looking almost as neat as the front. Um, it's very hard to make the back look exactly as neat as the front. If you have a um, see-through piece of fabric like tulle or something like that, um, sometimes you need to use what I call double running stitch instead of back stitch, but um, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> First, let's talk a little bit about materials. Um, there's several different kinds of fabric, but they break down into three basic categories. We have woven fabrics, knit fabrics, and then other fabrics. Uh, the other category would include things like plastics, felt, um, ripstop nylon, uh, stuff like that that just doesn't fray when you cut it. But for most people, for most clothing, for most sewing projects, you're probably either gonna be using a woven fabric or a knit fabric. And it's important to understand the difference between those two types of fabric because it really affects what you can do with hand sewing. Um, so woven fabric is the quilter's cotton that I use. Um, it is fabric, uh, I'm sorry, fabric is made of threads crisscrossing each other in a woven pattern, right? Like over under. Um, and so you have the, the threads are all sitting at a 90 degree angle to each other. When you cut the edge of it, you get that sort of frayed look. Um, you're going to see woven fabric in, again, quilting fabric, um, denim, blue jean material, canvas, all of that is woven fabric. When you pull on woven fabric, it does not pull very much when you pull in the direction of the fabric. If you pull it at a weird cross angle, it'll pull more. That's called the bias. Um, but for the purposes of this, if you pull it side to side, it's really gonna give you this kind of tight resistance. Now knits, on the other hand, um, this is a t-shirt, it's made of knit fabric. That's a, a fabric that's made of one continuous thread that is knitted, literally like a sweater, but it's at a much smaller scale. Um, and knit fabrics are super stretchy. So t-shirts, leggings, um, anything that's got some nice big stretch to it like that, that's a knit fabric. And you can see this is stretching a lot farther than that woven fabric that I just showed you. Um, stay the hell away from knit fabric if you're starting with hand sewing. It is a nightmare. It just keeps stretching. Um, it's, it's much harder to sew on a machine. It's much harder to sew by hand. If you're making garments and you need to use knit fabric, go for it. But if you're just starting out, stick with woven fabric. It's gonna save you a lot of headaches and hassle and all sorts of things. Um, if you don't wanna do quilters cotton like this, I would recommend denim. Um, it's a great place to get started. You do need to use a larger needle though. So let's talk about needles. Um, again, I started hand sewing with embroidery, so guess what? I use embroidery needles for my hand sewing. I use embroidery needles for almost every project that I do. I like embroidery needles because they have, here's some bigger ones so we can actually see them better. Um, they have really big eyes and they're really nice and long. And so you can get that nice big piece of thread through the eye of the needle. Now there's other types of needles which are called um, quilter's needles or sharps, which are general purpose needles. And I don't know, sorry guys, I didn't plan this out very well, but <laughs> if you can see there, the eyes on the sharps are tiny compared to the eyes on the embroidery needles, right? So it's much easier to get thread through those bigger embroidery needles. Um, and I just find it generally easier to sew with them. If you're using an extremely fine fabric like silk, 
or something that's very thin, you're going to want to use a smaller needle. And so that's where you would really want to get into the sharps. Um, if you're quilting, you should use a quilting needle because that's a different technique. Um, but all purpose sewing needles are okay for hand sewing. But again, I really prefer using embroidery needles. I find them easier to hold on to. I find it easier to thread the needle and I just find them easier to work with. Um, if you are using the heavier fabric like denim, you're going to need a bigger needle. If you're using smaller fabric, again, like silk, you need a smaller needle. So this, uh, set that I was showing you guys is a bunch of different size needles. I think that is sizes three through nine. I usually use about a size eight, uh, whoop, which is this one. So you can see there's a bunch of different sizes there, right? Um, go ahead and get yourself one of these selections of embroidery needles. You got a bunch of different ones to choose from and you can kind of mess around and see what works for you. Now, of course, in addition to different needles and different fabrics, there's also different threads that you can sew with. Um, if you're doing embroidery, you might want to use embroidery floss, which comes in a package that looks like this. It's like this weird little skein and you have to actually pull the end of it out to get some thread out. And then if you look at this thread, there's actually six strands of thread there. And what you do is you pull a length of thread out and then you actually separate the threads from each other. So you're only using one sixth of the whole thing. Um, this is what I do most of my embroidery with. The samples that I just showed you were all done with this regular six, six strand embroidery floss, but they also make thicker embroidery thread for if you want to do thicker line on your piece that you're doing. So um, this is called Pearl Cotton size eight, which is considerably bigger than, well, this one looks bigger, but again, it's, you got to separate it, right? So this is six pieces of thread and that's one piece of thread right next to it, right? And then there's also Pearl Cotton number five, which is even bigger than pearl cotton number eight. Um, you can use any of these. These are a little harder to deal with just because they are bigger. I recommend if you're just starting out, um, if you're starting with embroidery, use embroidery floss. It's beautiful. It comes in many, many colors, every color you could possibly imagine, even metallic, but stay away from the metallic ones for now. They're a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, or if you're just doing sewing for construction purposes, honestly, just to use some regular old all-purpose sewing thread. This is a uh, Guterman all-purpose thread. This is what I use in my sewing machine. Um, and I also use it for hand sewing. It's a great strong thread. Um, you can only pull on it so hard before it's going to break. I'm sure you guys have seen me breaking threads in my Shibori tutorials, but you can see how big that thread is there. And then there's also heavy duty thread, which is considerably thicker than the regular all-purpose thread. So again, if you're doing a heavy duty project, heavy duty thread, bigger needle, if you're doing a project, a smaller, you know, finer detail work project or with thinner fabric, you want to use a smaller needle and a smaller thread to put that together. Um, and of course I did not bring a, a, a reel of dental floss to show you guys, but if you are a punk and you are sewing patches on your vest by hand, which is the proper way to do it. I use a sewing machine cause it goes faster, but if you are sewing patches on your vest and you are a punk rocker, um, you might just want to use dental floss. Dental floss is extremely strong and, uh, will not break while you're sewing with it. And it is, uh, when you see punks walking around with a thick white thread holding the patches onto their uh, jackets or pants, that's actually dental floss. So <laughs> um, there's my tools and materials talk. I think we should go ahead and get to sewing. All right. So I've got all my stuff ready to go. Um, I'm actually not going to use this all-purpose sewing thread at all, but I have it out on the table just to show you. Uh, I did forget to say you're going to need a pair of sharp scissors and... A thimble is super helpful for this project. You don't have to have it, but it is super helpful. Also, some people choose to use an embroidery hoop to stretch their fabric in order to keep it under tension while they're sewing. I don't. I actually just keep the fabric under tension using my fingers. Um, and I don't like to use an embroidery hoop because it does make the fabric kind of wrinkly in the end when you take it out of the hoop. Um, but up to you, your choice. If you want to use a hoop, you can but I'm here to show you how to sew without a hoop. So let's do that. Um, first of all, we need to take our embroidery thread out. One of my favorite jokes is the best bright red is color number 666. Gotta love it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pull some out. Generally, you don't want to sew with more than about 12 or 18 inches of thread, but I do double my thread. So let's go ahead and just pull a piece out that's about that long. And then what you wanna do is you want to separate it and 
your instinct is going to be to kind of like pull this stuff back. But what you really want to do is just pinch the entire group of threads and then grab the one that you want and pull it out. And that's going to kind of bunch up the rest of it, but then bloop, it just pops out. So that's now five threads. And here is our one thread that we're going to sew with. So my ultimate trick that I'm gonna give you guys for starting your line of stitching, which is what I learned from those ladies back at Skein Lane back in the day, is you fold your thread in half, and then you're gonna put the ends of the thread through the eye of the needle, not the U-shaped bend in the thread, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my needle. This is an embroidery needle, just like the ones in the package there. I do use some spit to get it wet on the end. Hopefully the sewing guards are with me and I can go right in here today. Some days it's easier than other days. Oh, I got one but not the other. You gotta get both ends of your thread into that needle. And of course, because I'm doing this on camera, it doesn't wanna work, but there you go. So put it through about to there. So you have, again, the two loose ends of the needle, or sorry, the thread are on one side and the much longer end of your thread terminates with that little U-shaped loop in the thread, okay? So now that we have that, let's get our fabric and get ready to sew. If you're embroidering, you're just gonna go through one layer of fabric. If you're using this technique for construction, you want to use two layers of fabric that you can then sew together, obviously. I'm gonna show you how to do it with the two layers, but the same technique works both ways. Uh, decide what's the front and what's the back of your project. In some cases, it doesn't matter, but in a lot of cases with embroidery, it does. So let's call this side the front and this side the back. So taking my needle, oops, starting on the back side of the fabric, I'm gonna poke my needle through here and pull it through to the front, and I'm not gonna pull it through all the way. I'm gonna leave that loop on the end, okay? Then I'm gonna go back from front to back, just a little bit away from my initial pass through the fabric, if you wanna call it that, and pull that to the back and not pull it through all the way, but get it pretty close. And then right when I get where that loop of fabric is about to go through the hole, I take my needle and I go back through the loop, creating a locking mechanism for the very first stitch of my line of stitching. See that? No knots required. Now I'm secured to the fabric and I can keep sewing. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another pass through the fabric from the back to the front. And this time what I'm gonna do is a little bit away from the edge of the stitch that I just made. Now I can do this without looking at the back. You're probably gonna have to look at the back. So if you look at the back of your work, you'd go through here, okay? Now this is why it's called the back stitch. You come out of the fabric a little bit away from the stitch that you just made, pull it all the way through, and then go back down through the hole of the other stitch. When you pull that one to the back, you have two stitches sitting neatly next to each other. We look at the back, we're gonna again skip over the stitch we just made and basically do the beginning of the next stitch here. On the front, it looks like you've skipped a space, but that's okay because you come out over here and then you go back. Again, that is why this is called a back stitch, and it produces this beautifully neat line on the front of your work. It produces a fairly neat line on the back of your work, but it is thicker and a little bit messier than the line on the front. Again, back to front, and then you come out away from your stitching, and when you go back through, you go back to there. I hope the directions I'm saying are making sense. I'm gonna do this a little bit quickly now that I've showed you how to form a bunch of them, and hopefully it'll make sense why this particular stitch is called a back stitch. Again, my line of stitching is going that way, but I have to go back with each stitch that I'm taking. So skip ahead and then go back. And you can see this hold I'm doing on this side, that's how I'm holding the fabric under tension with my fingers. I actually am pinching it between these two fingers here and between my thumb and my pinky right there. And that's what's creating 
the tension here that's needed to pass the needle through the fabric without the whole thing completely collapsing. If I didn't have this under tension on this side, when I went to try and put the stitch through, the whole thing is just gonna flop away from me. You see that? So that's why I hold my hand like that. And again, that's why some people choose to use an embroidery hoop. Make a couple more stitches for your line of back stitches, and then I will show you guys how to finish it off. Obviously, I talked about straight lines in my intro, but you can make a curve or any other shape with this back stitch that you want to. But we're just starting, so let's make that straight line. Now, when you want to end the line of back stitching, again, to do this without a knot, all you have to do is go under a few stitches on the back of your work. You can either go in the same direction like this so that your working thread is wrapping around the stitches on your fabric, or you can go back and forth in kind of a zigzag pattern like this. But the point is to take the thread under several of the stitches on the back of the work before you cut it. At this point, you can cut your thread and there's your completed line of back stitching. I know it doesn't look like much, like I said, it is humble, but it is great for drawing a line and it is very strong. So this is how this is constructed. If you pull on it really hard, you can see the stitches coming through, but that is a nice, secure piece of backstitch. All right? Now, let's contrast backstitch with running stitch. Running stitch is pretty similar to backstitch, but you don't go back on yourself. You just keep going in that forward direction. So again, I'm gonna separate my thread from my six strand embroidery floss. Now the piece I have sitting over there off camera is only four threads. I'm gonna make that Fold it in half, loop. I'm gonna grossly spit on my thread off camera so that I can get it through the eye of the needle. Oh, first try that time. All right, so for running stitch, we're gonna do the same start that we did for the back stitch, where we're gonna start on the back of the work. We're gonna put the needle through to the front. We're gonna pull it through, but not far enough to pull the thread all the way through. Then I'm going to take that first stitch, just like with the back stitch, go from the front of the work to the back of the work, pull it, and then before that little loop disappears, I'm just going to catch it with my thread, securing the thread. Now, for running stitch, I'm going to do the same thing where I come out over here a little bit away from my first stitch, but instead of going back to make the stitch, I'm going to keep going forwards. And so with running stitch, what you get is a dashed line instead of a solid line. And this is useful for lots of applications, but one of the things about running stitch is it's also a gathering stitch. So if you're using it for construction and you do a line of running stitch, I hope this is making sense since I'm not showing you guys the back, but the back of it it's basically the same as the front, okay? And you get that broken line with the running stitch. It's great if you want a dashed line. It's great if you want to put things together quickly. The problem with running stitch is it is, like I said, a gathering stitch. And so if I, let me just bring my thread to the front one more time so I can show you guys. If I pull on it too hard, that's what happens. So that might be useful if you're trying to gather your fabric up, but if you're not trying to gather your fabric up and you just want it to lay flat, running stitch might not be the best choice. One of the things that you can do with running stitch though, and uh, this is the double running stitch that I talked about for if you have see-through fabric, is you can go back on yourself after you've made the initial line and you just go back into the holes that you already made with the first line of stitching and basically fill in the gaps of that running stitch. And once you turn it around and go the other direction, it kind of locks it up and makes it so that it doesn't want to gather up on itself anymore. So double running stitch can be a good choice if backstitch is not going to work for you, but I usually recommend using backstitch for almost everything. Um, like I said, it's my go-to. It looks neater than the double running stitch. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm also going pretty quickly, but... Um, backstitch. It's my buddy. It's my friend. I love backstitch. 
Now, of course, there's lots of other useful stitches that you need to know if you want to expand your horizons on hand sewing, but that back stitch and this running stitch will get you a lot of places just with these two things. Now, there's my line of double running stitch. Contrast it with my line of back stitch on the back. The back stitch line is thicker. The double running stitch line is really appears to just be a single line. You can use both of these for construction purposes, but again, I recommend that back stitch one. Again, with this, you can end it by running underneath several stitches and then clipping the thread off. If you do want the more secure finish that I was talking about, what I do there is, now remember I have two ends of the thread here going through my needle, right? So if I wanna tie a knot, what I do is I actually pull one of them out. Well, easier said than done. There we go. And then I take the needle that has now only one thread sticking out of it, and I go under the threads here one more time. So now one of my threads is on one side and one of my threads is on the other side. And then I can tie a square knot. Square knot is the one where you put the right, so this is right and this is left. So square knot is right over left, pull it tight, and then left over right and pull that tight. With a knot, you don't wanna clip it right up next to the knot. You wanna leave a little bit of extra thread there. Otherwise your knot can come undone and everything can come unravel. So there we have it. Back stitch on the top, double running stitch on the bottom. My basic hand sewing tutorial. I think I will come back either next week or the week after and show you guys how to do a whip stitch, which is also known as an overcast stitch, and it's great for dealing with edges, and that is the one that you want to use to hand sew your uh, punk patches on your vest, if that is your mood. Um, and if you guys like this one and you want me to keep going, I have a whole world of hand embroidery stitches. I can show you how to do chain stitch. I can show you how to do French knots. I can show you how to do stem stitch. I mean, the, the, the world of decorative stitching is nearly endless. But again, I use that back stitch for 90% of everything I'm doing. This guy is back stitched. This guy is back stitched. There's some more. These are all from the same era of Sean doing these funny drawings for me. Oh, one more. We got that uh, rock, paper, scissors, right? Backstitch. Backstitch is your buddy. Backstitch makes a beautiful, wonderful, clean line. And again, if you're being careful, the back looks almost as neat as the front of your work. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions or if you want to see any more. I'll be back in a couple days with another Cinema Club Sunday Roundup. Thanks for watching.